Now back to this idea of the universe at large scales being very, very simple. How does entropy play into this? Does the universe get simpler as time moves on? Yes, that's a wonderful question. Indeed, the universe is extremely simple at large scales in space, right? As I've explained, when you look outwards, the further you look, the simpler it is. It's basically almost uniform with this extremely simple superposition of waves on top of it, scale invariant, random waves, very small amplitude. So it's simple at large scales in space. It's also unbelievably simple at large scales in time. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we live 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang. But if we go to 20 billion years or 30 billion years after the Big Bang, based on what we see now, we can forecast what the universe will look like. And what is happening, what will happen, is that the dark energy, which is absolutely constant in space and constant in time, that dark energy will take over the universe because everything else is being diluted away. The matter, the radiation, the density is falling, the number of galaxies, you know, these are all being diluted by the expansion of the universe. The dark energy is not not diluted by the universe's expansion. So in the far future, basically it'll be in a universe full of nothing but dark energy, absolutely smooth, no galaxies or objects. And so indeed the, the universe in the far future is extremely simple. Now, what about entropy? Well, you know, entropy is supposed to grow according to the laws of thermodynamics, you know, things, the entropy never decreases. Disorder always grows. And then it turns out that gravity is able to contribute to the entropy. And so you have two types of entropy. You've got the entropy in ordinary matter, and that's maximized when the ordinary matter is as smoothly distributed as possible. But then you have the entropy in gravity, and the entropy and gravity is maximized when this dark energy takes over everything else. We say the entropy is maximized in de Sitter space. And de Sitter space is this kind of completely smooth, uniform universe dominated by dark energy. So it turns out that the dark energy future of the universe is the maximum entropy state possible. And so the universe started from zero entropy at the Big Bang, an extremely simple beginning. It ended up in this maximum entropy state, which is also extremely simple. And all the complexity is in the both in space and in time. So we live in the middle. We are literally in the middle of the universe around us, obviously. That's what we can see. So we're in the center of it. But we're in the center of it in another sense. We're in the center of it on, in scale, right? So the very tiniest things are elementary particles. The, the mesoscopic things are us, and that's where all the complexity is. And the very largest scale things, both in space and time, is the dark energy, which is, again, extremely simple. So, you know, the, this picture is kind of the return of the notion that, that we are special, we live in the center of the universe. You know, the, the, this was uh, discounted by the discoveries in um, the Middle Ages that people used to think that the Earth was the center of the universe. And then we discovered that, no, the sun is the center of the solar system. And then we discovered lots of other suns and stars and galaxies. And those, that made us feel more and more ordinary. But in fact, we're not that ordinary because we live in the middle. And the universe is, you know, and the middle is where all the complexity is. So I would say, you know, we physicists are just getting our head around this notion. It's not fully understood yet quite what the simplicity means at very large scales. But I believe it's absolutely as fundamental as the simplicity at small scales, right? So it was a huge discovery when we realize that everything around us is built out of particles, elementary particles, electrons, protons. The basic building blocks of matter are extremely simple. 
But I think it's equally important that when we go to large scales, the universe itself is like a giant elementary particle. It's extremely simple. And then, of course, the largest, some of the largest objects in the universe, the black holes, we are now able to detect. These are also extremely simple. I mean, they may be millions of times the mass of the sun, but they really are like just big elementary particles. So how physics, you know, attains simplicity at very tiny scales and at very large scales is, I think, you know, the characteristic of today, today's physics. How do we unify physics and see its simplicity on small and large scales and its complexity in the middle? You know, in, in a way this tells you, so, so when you say, when I say the complexity is in the middle, suddenly you realize, well, perhaps we are the most complicated things in the universe, right? Because we, we, we're in the middle. And when we go to larger scales, we don't see anything more complicated than us. In fact, it goes the other way. The larger scales we go, we get things are simpler and simpler. So I think this means that in a certain sense, we may be the leading edge of complexity in the universe. And that is occurring on our scale, in the intermediate scale. The, on large and small scales, things are extremely simple. That's amazing, and it, it it it's almost like time repeating itself because it, it reminds me of Aristotle. So, right, we would be the culmin <laughs> right. Aristotle's revenge. We would be the culmination of the universe. In other words, a conscious thinking that, that, organism okay. is the most complex thing in the universe. There's a beauty to that. Again, an elegance. <laughs>